public service announcement. We got a fake reporter doing fake news by the name of Ellie Setback. Not only is this scumbag doing fake news and being a culture vulture, but he's also pitting young African Americans against each other. Black brothers, brown brothers, and alike. Instead of pushing this boxing agenda forward and asking the right questions and the tough questions, he's creating dissension and division with a microphone and capitalizing on it financially while leaving others to repatch relationships that have been built over quite some time. I say, let the fighters and the teams do the arguing, the debating, the fussing, the fighting, only to make up because they have a mutual respect for their positions. Let's not let some scumbag reporter who's never boxed a day of his life, never helped a, anyone in boxing. All right, man, all right, all right. We cruising through the burbs today. People say, why are you always in your car doing videos? I'm always in the streets or I'm always at work. I don't, I rarely get to sit down and shit. That's the crazy thing about it. It's a crazy thing. Nigga, you probably do DoorDash, nope. Shit. It's always, it's just always moving. I always try to stay productive and shit, man. But uh, yeah, man, you seen the video about Bill. I got a chance to chop it up with him for a minute. <clears throat> I'm glad I did wait to do the video, but uh, basically, basically, <clears throat> what he accusing, you know, and I got his side of it is he accusing Ellie Setback of trying to uh, instigate between the brothers. You know, he said he really ain't got no problem with the brothers kind of like, you know, you know, getting in between Shakur and Devin Haney. You know, because he, he basically said he they we kind of understand the culture a lot better. That's what he said. We understand the culture a lot better. So he not mad if you, you know, ride with Shakur, you ride with Devin, or you neutral, or you wish Shakur on some things, you with Devin. But he mad at Ellie Setback because he going out his way to hate, hate on Devin Haney. And um, he said that, uh, you know, Ellie going around saying Devin ain't no success. And, you know, basically what, basically what's going on is this. Ellie Setback is a pro PBC guy, right? So, you know, it's Paul Malinaji had a lot to say about Devin Haney, right? Paulie is a pro PBC guy. He wasn't always that way, but when he started working with Al Heyman, he became a pro PBC guy. Okay, that's what we do know. He was dissing Al Heyman before Al Heyman started cutting them checks. Then he started working on Showtime. I think fuck with Al Heyman. And um, like I said, the person who who, who pay your bills, you gonna have loyalty to them. You know, and I say that, say that about women all the time. Like you really know if a woman love you when you get with them when you broke, or you go through something financially, you go through something emotionally, and they able to hold you down, and they don't bitch complain about it. Right? That's that's how you know. But. A lot of these dudes out here get get they use the money to get the woman real quick, and then when they out of mustard, she gone. And, and it, you know, I don't I don't blame the woman. The one the the, the relationship is built off the money. That's like building one of these beautiful houses riding through the burbs, and it's built off styrofoam. It's not a strong foundation. And but nonetheless, they have a strong relationship with PBC and Al Heyman. And if you notice, Leonard Ellaby does the same thing. Like Leonard, not Leonard, the people don't get mad at Leonard because he a brother. But you see, they tried to put a Mayweather card the same day. And I should have asked him about that. December 9th. And when Mayweather couldn't make the exhibition December 9th, they canceled the December 9th card. So that's their way of being spiteful for Devin Haney for not signing with him. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And Ellie Setback has an alliance to PBC. So he's going to do their media dirty work. 
You know what I'm saying? And you know it's the same thing with Terrence Crawford. Now, he had a bone to pick with Terrence Crawford because Terrence Crawford didn't give him an interview. Right? Which, to me, you don't see me dissing fighters that don't give me an interview. That, to me, that's the equivalent of talking to... I talked to a girl at Walmart. She's like, nah, I'm good. Like, cool. I was trying to holler at her. She said, no, I'm good. Cool. We, I, I'm going to look like, man, big nappy of that hoe. You know, nah, bro. You keep it moving. Now, if they want to get eccentric, like, no, fuck you, nigga. I ain't give you no hoe-ass interview. Then, at the end of the day, I can either feed into the nigga more moment or I can walk away. And more times, I, I, I'm at the point in my life where I'm walking away. As long as you don't put your hands on me, we good. You don't spin on me or nothing like that, we good, we Gucci. Like I always bring this song, that was a song by Boys in the Hood when Jeezy was still on there, their first album. You can talk all the if you want, but don't put your hands on me. That's all I'm saying, don't spit on me, don't put your hand, we good. I'm just gonna walk away. I remember I was talking to that with my homegirl one day. <laughs> we were speaking this shit and she like, what if your ex confront you at the, we out together, your ex confront you. Uh, she, she was like, I'm just going to walk away. <laughs> I said, we going to be walking the gateway together. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know her. I'm about to be on World Star. She nigga, that's CJ. But, but yeah, man, that's just what, uh, that's the problem, bro. His, his PB, his hate for Devin Haney, and that's what it is. It's balled up. It, it's, it's inherited from PBC. How can the kid that was fighting in on the chilling circuit, fighting in ballrooms, how can he not be a success? How can he not be a success? From fighting in ballrooms, right? fighting in ballrooms to making millions of dollars. Oh, he's a private school kid. So was I. <laughs> Fuck, they got to do with anything. I still have friends that sold crack. I still have friends that hit licks. I still have friends that, that you know, that's successful. You know, I still have friends that, you know, who parents was at, you know, houses and all shit. And I had friends that was poor. I have friends who had single, who was raised by single mothers. I have friends that had two parent households. I have biracial, I have biracial friends. I ain't never treat nobody different from nobody else. And having different friends from all different financial walks of life and family, they help make me into a, a well-rounded individual. So I don't never, I don't never like uh, that. Don't define me, bro. That's why I tell people probably, yeah, my parents paid for my education for a while. For a while. No, I don't ever hide what I, what I, what I was. You know, played, uh, I tap danced. All types of shit. Went to perform art school, played instruments, guitars, flutes, all types of shit. And they want to put that, and a lot of people perpetuate that, that stigma. A lot of black people perpetuate that stigma. And then you got a guy like Ellie Setback who perpetuating that shit. Or, or the brother at the press camp. Oh, you're a private school kid. Yeah, what they got to do with anything? Being a Dusty and being a thug old and being a pookie ain't no badge of honor, dog. You know, we do. And then when we, when we become of age, when we become teenagers, what do we do? Why, why do we, you know, why do we want to be cool and dress nice as, as boys, as young boys and teenagers? To get the women. But after a while, then you got your mind, you got your mind on the money, you know. But uh, but yeah, like I continue to say, man, like he, you know, basically what he's saying is, Ellie Setback should stay out of black people's business, and then Ellie Setback just going out hating on Devin Haney because he cool with Tank Davis, you know what I'm saying? He probably cool with Isaac Cruz, he cool with the PBC, but. And it's the problem that we have in boxing. The problem that we have in boxing is that, you know, take away Devin Haney, take away Bill, take away uh, uh, Isaac Cruz, uh, Tank Davis, Rolando, Rolly Ramiro. Take away that. Erase all of that. Okay? 
He writes it. Lee Ellie sat back there. Ellie sat back is going out his way to tell, you know, his millions of followers, or he got a whole bunch of followers across the platform. He's going out his way to tell these people that Devin Haney ain't worthy. Devin Haney ain't a real champion. I'm paraphrasing. Devin Haney ain't this. Instead of doing what a media member supposed to do, a real media member supposed to do, what they supposed to do? They supposed to push the fight. Well, you know what? I think Tank gonna get him. Tank, you need to go fight him. Tank, you should fight him. But instead of that, instead of that, he's telling everybody, oh, Devin ain't that good. Devin don't deserve to fight. Devin, you know, Devin ain't this. Devin ain't instead of instead of saying, you know what? We need to push this fight. We need to push Javante and, and Devin. Devin, they need to go ahead and fight. Instead of telling Tank Davis that he need to fight him and putting pressure to fight him, what we doing now? We putting, we telling fans that, oh, he ain't that good. Y'all really don't want to see that fight. That fight ain't shit. Let's go see Tank fight Esau Cruz. That's the real fight. Devin Haney is fake. Devin Haney, uh, a manufacturer. Devin Haney ain't this. He ain't a real champion. Tank, you know, Tank don't need him. That's what he's saying. In so many words, and that's what he's doing. Instead of pushing a fight and saying, you know, well, I'd even respect him if he got behind Devin uh, Tank Davis. Said, like, Tank a fuck up Devin up. You know, that Tank Devin ain't trying to do that. You now, I man, I wish he would have sealed the contract. Tank, I, res I respect him doing that. But what they doing is what is what PB is the reason why PBC not thriving. That's what they doing. It's the reason why PBC not thriving. And the reason why PBC, why PBC not thriving, the reason why PBC not thriving is because they don't want to make the fights that people want to see when people want to see the fights. That's why they not thriving. And Ellie said back, is that's what he's doing. That's why he hating on all this Devin Haney stuff. He's trying to deter people from wanting to see Devin fight Tank Davis and fight the top fighters. And now what they're going to try to do, what these PBC dudes do, they're going to try to pitch secure against Devin Haney because they want secure and Devin Haney to take each other out so Tank Davis have an easier time. Instead of Tank Davis, you know, being the one that he called them and picking these guys off one by one and beating them, right? And showing that he is pound for pound worthy, showing that he is the best fighter in the world, showing that he is the face of boxing, but he don't ever got to show it. That just lets you know it's a dick pulling contest. It's a aka it's a popularity contest. That's what it is. It's a popularity contest. These boxing reporters not real no more, and these fans not real no more. And a media, a media like Ellie Setback got a lot to do with it. Ellie, do your job and push for these fights. Don't push against these fights, Ellie. I've been taking a long way this way. I made the quick way right now. Do your fucking job. Instead of just hate and get and get away with it because you can, because you're popular. And you know ain't nobody gonna put no hands on you, so that's why people feel comfortable to say what they wanna say. Like I always make the analogy. It's like when the teacher in security around in school, don't nobody really talk greasy. But as soon as that teacher walk out the classroom, right? As soon as the teacher walk out the classroom and shit, the dude, the, the other dude quiet as hell. As soon as we get in that locker room, I remember real quick, we in the locker room or whatever, right? And we used to, uh, you know, we used to uh, be in the locker room with the uh, a grade above us, the seventh graders, eighth graders, whatever. And um, they like, uh, so I, I don't know what we was beefing over. You know, it's a robbery, both, you know, we both young or whatever. I still got a the beauty supply. We both young or whatever, right? So they just talk shit, a little rivalry, whatever. And, you know, some guys would be quiet and they start, like, coming at me. So, you know, I'm like, nigga, you know, I'm in a new school. So I'm like, nigga, what up? They're like, oh, you going to say something, man? Nigga, what up? We square it up. Bop, 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 bop. You know how it go. Like, dude, this shit ain't sweet. Like, I'm going to say something. But, you know, it wasn't nobody around, no teacher, no nothing. So, yeah, you ain't going to punk me. And, that, and that, you know, that is what it is, bro. So he can be able to talk all that tough shit because he able to talk all that tough shit because he know ain't nobody going to touch him. 
you know, and I can't say why. Kanye West, West, I can't say that word. You know I can't say it, but uh, yeah, it is what it is, man. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel. That subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications, increase your chance, get notifications. We go live or drop video financially. You want to support the channel? Cash app, dollar sign, CJ Good 313 Venmo, CJ Good 313 PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitter, Instagram, Spotify, Anchor, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, all nine. Check out the Box Moves playlist. Hit the link tree. You can find me everywhere. Peace.